Okay, before we start the question and answer, I would like to get on stage the Director of Photography, Mr. David McDonald. Please come on stage. Last but not least, Mr. Peter Rühe, who is the leader of the Gandhi Surf Foundation and who made it possible to get Mr. Paris Khan here to Berlin. Please come on stage. Once again, we would like to thank you for what you did for the festival. And um, are there any questions right away? Okay, I will start with one. <laughs> oh, you have one? I'm Siddharth. Uh, thanks a lot you know, for giving us such a gem of a fantabulous movie. But the one thing that I want to ask you, uh, how many cases uh, Darshan Zariwala ko Gandhi ke role ke liye pick kiya? Because I've seen him in a movie called Style. <laughs> and uh, he played... Can you translate what you just said, please? Okay. Uh, what I asked him is uh, how and why he picked Darshan Zariwala in the role of Gandhi because I have seen uh, Darshan Zariwala in a movie called Style back in India and he is not a very big actor on the front in, in the Indian cinema. So why? And if you, if you have seen a Style movie, you would never ever pick Darshan Zariwala for Gandhi. <laughs> uh, firstly, I think the audience here has not seen Style. Okay. So I suppose that's one part. The secondly is that uh, I myself have not seen that film. I've known Darshan as a stage actor for a very long time. And specifically why I took him is that uh, Gandhi was a Gujarati. Uh, to just give you a background that India has got many states. And one of the states is Gujarat. And that's where Gandhi came from. So I suppose uh, there is a cultural body language that he brings in which is closer to the cultural body language of Gandhi. And the fact is that both of them are Gujaratis. Uh, I was able to, to take him in that direction, to bring that part of the body language and the speech and many other things. And the fact that he is a very fine stage actor. And again, the fact is that he is not very well known helped to take a well known name. I never wanted any stars to be in the film because the star uh, distracts from the character, uh, particularly in the Indian context. So I suppose that's the reason that I that I took him. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, I think it's your acumen and your view that you have taken the best of a you know very. Oh, very thank you. Very thank you for your compliment. I don't think so. Director can only you know just clarify a few things that I, I do not like to take credit. He is himself an extraordinary actor. Uh, there are films that people have to do for various reasons. So I wouldn't like to take credit for that. Thank you. Thank you. You just. Yeah. Okay. First of all, I must congratulate you. It's a wonderful film and very bold film. And uh, the role of Gandhi was done very well. Uh, uh, my simple question is, uh, you, have seen, uh, you have shown so many scenes, but uh, the last scene where Gandhi was killed, you have not shown that scene. Uh, was there any particular reason for that? Yeah, it's a deliberate uh, in the sense that, of course, we all make choices uh, when you're making a film. And the choice was that uh, his assassination has been shown again and again in various versions of the film of uh, Gandhi as a subject. If you see Sir Richard Attenborough's Gandhi, he's shown it twice over. In the beginning and again, he shows it all over again in many documentaries. I thought that the bigger idea was, is that how did ordinary people feel about Gandhi while he was assassinated? Uh, everybody felt they had lost their father because Gandhi transcended even age. Once he became what is called Babu in India and called the father of the nation, even people elder than him felt as if they had lost their own father. And I thought that that was very essential and important. And of course the irony is that he happens to tell this to his own son who has become an orphan uh, uh, by his assassination. So I thought that that was a much better way of, of giving that kind of uh, texture 
to that event rather than showing the real assassination, which in any case has been shown again, I guess that was the reason. Okay, um, you can still ask questions if you have. Okay, I have a question. <laughs> Um, as you just said, you met uh, the main actor um, here on stage. So you have been involved in theater making for more than 20, 30 years. And also... Not you have, that long. <laughs> and uh, you have also been um, dealing with Gandhi, the subject yes. of Gandhi. So how come you started now to make a movie? I actually never wanted to make films because uh, I thought that uh, theater is a medium that allows me a uh, wide range of uh, subjects to deal with and the power of theater in its suggestion and its symbolism and its minimalism uh, makes it to me uh, uh, a very powerful medium to deal with and the whole idea of a, a live human being on stage and rather than a projector running a celluloid I suppose that experience you can never get and I, I'm totally uh, a person who have been very involved in theatre for a long time and all the nuances and semiotics of theatre are something that really, you know, uh, get me very, very excited and, and I'm very, very passionate about theatre. So I thought that, and the fact is that unlike theatre, cinema uh, is a hugely technical medium and a medium that does rely largely on its realism uh, as the operative idea. And, and so for me, uh, coming from theatre, not having the technical background uh, also was the reason that I stayed away. Uh, various offers were given to me to make what is called, and you've been seeing a lot as I hear now in Germany, the Bollywood song and dance kind of film. I at that time could not get myself to do a film which does not have a social and political context and which is all about having fun, which is great, but I couldn't get myself to do that. Uh, so I, when I decided to do the film, one of the reasons of doing a film was that I realized the reach that you have with the film. Uh, unlike theater where you actually need to have people come on a particular day at a particular time, when it comes to film, it gets then digitized and so it reaches a large number, whereas theater was sort of restrictive in that sense. And I thought this was a subject that needs to go much beyond. And to deal with this subject was important because this dealing of Gandhi in the human way, humanizing Gandhi, gives a depth to understanding the, the man, the idea, and also the, the person that he was. So that's the reason that I decided to do the film. I would like to ask uh, Mr. McDonald a question, if you want. Um, is it the first time that you worked with an Indian crew? And if yes, was it very much different than working with non-Indian crew? Uh, it was not totally the first time I have worked in India, but just on uh, TV and cinema advertising films. So this was the first time I'd spent any protracted period mm -hmm. in real contact with an Indian project. Um, I can't pretend that when I first arrived in, in India, I wasn't very nervous because here was a uniquely Indian project about a very special Indian and not just that, but the man who single-handedly did more to rid India of the British than anyone else and here suddenly is an Englishman arriving to photograph this project and I did wonder how I might be received. Um, my fears proved completely groundless. Uh, I was um, welcomed in, in a way that was really quite astonishing. On a practical level, India is very different. <laughs> India will use ten men where Europe will use one bulldozer. And this principle tends to apply even within filming. In Europe, we'll make a film with a crew of maybe 20 or 30 people. On this film, my personal photographic crew numbered 29 people, and our total basic crew was over 90. And this is really a quite astonishing way to work, and if you're not used to it and you come from it outside, as I did, it, to begin with, it seems like total and absolute chaos. And it takes a while to understand that it's a peculiarly Indian chaos that has rules and logic of its own and out of it results emerge as if by magic. 
it is really quite astonishing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, one more question to you. Um, you have been working with the subject of Gandhi for such a long time now. You have seen a lot of films <clears throat> that um, have to do with Gandhi. What makes this film different from all the other films you have seen on Gandhi, like for example the Edinburgh film? Well, there are various angles to look at it. I mean, first of all, it's a technically very well done film. And I would put it on the same level, if not higher, than Richard Attenborough's film. Thanks to David. Thanks to Carol. Then certainly, I mean, the subject it, de it deals with, it's a very bold step by Ferris and Anil to decide to do a film on Gandhi's relationship with his eldest son because it doesn't fit in any proper category, neither in India nor abroad. It's not a Bollywood film for sure, and it's not a film which would, which would reach out to a very wide audience uh, outside India. So I think it's, it's been very bold to do the film at all. And it was, from the very beginning, they could expect a lot of controversy in India, which was there before the film came out, and that's very interesting to me. Uh, it received a lot of criticism, especially amongst the Gandhians in India, they didn't want the film to be released, you know, uh, because they feared that Gandhi would be portrayed in a, in, a, in a bad way. When the film came out, suddenly, uh, you know, within one day, the criticism stopped and, and they realized that um, it was not a black and white portrayal, it was a very sensitive um, portrayal of that very special relationship and, uh, and, they, and they appreciate it. I mean, the media went, uh, you know, they, they got very good response. Media responded very well on the film, and uh, it's, it's, it's a very special, special production, you know, and, and very different, definitely, from, from to other films. Thank you very much. Um, are there questions from the audience, maybe? I think this film is more difficult. It was more difficult to produce this film because there are so many sensitive issues, so many delicate things in this film than in other films on Gandhi. And that's why I want to congratulate once again. There was one more question here. Um. And maybe it's unfair to compare it with other Gandhi versions, and especially the Hollywood version. Um, I've seen that film and I've forgotten completely the details of that Hollywood film. Maybe, like uh, you said, sometimes having a, a big star distracts from the, the way the, the film evolves. So. For me, this film worked uh, much more because, uh, well, Gandhi is tied already with historical information, the father, I mean, everybody knows about him, everybody knows the details, and you're right, so you don't even have to show his death again. But uh, employing the relationship with the son uh, gives it a human dimension that that many of us can identify is with. I think so many young people want to slay the father in a thousand ways uh, and for a thousand reasons, but um, because of this you are able to also give Gandhi, um, uh, um, even as a, maybe a dictatorial father that sometimes we perceive in our own fathers. So I think maybe the fact also that uh, since you were a theater director, if I understand it right, uh, mm -hmm. maybe that is why it worked, because you gave that human dimension as a theater director. Maybe if you had been a Hollywood or even a Bollywood or whatever director, you would have, with a lot of experience in film, you might have given too much production values to, well, which I think you're direct, you're, cinematographer did very well, but that left you the 
but simplified probably your task of concentrating on the human side. That's why for me this film works much better than, and maybe I think I have to congratulate your, your theatrical background may have given the sun that chemistry that allowed Gandhi to be even more palatable to us who come from the outside. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's one more question. Um, I was interested in uh, uh, to know the background um, why you choose the perspective of the uh, son of Gandhi. Uh, I think I did uh, allude to it uh, when I said that uh, apart from various things, I think some of the things that the gentleman here has explained, uh, why I wanted to do a story primarily because uh, you have the political Gandhi with Sir Richard Attenborough's film. Uh, you had a bit of again a slightly political Gandhi which uh, Sean Benegal made a film called Making of Mahatma which dealt with his life in South Africa. Then there is a very popular Bollywood film called Lagera Bunna Bhai which is kind of a comical sort of way of looking at his social ideas. I think by doing this part, the, by making a film about his family, giving, you, giving us a dimension about what he was as an ordinary father, as a family man, gives the depth in understanding this very complex person, a great idea, but a very complex human being. I suppose that is the reason. And also there is a great identification uh, for the audience, uh, particularly I made a film in India, where the aspirations and the expectation of children and the principles of the father, of the parents. And that is always, you know, you come into clash. And so this is not about a failure of a father, it's a failure of a relationship. And which we see again and again in various families. So if you take Gandhi out of this and you put any other family, they would be able to relate to this film. And that is the reason that I thought that this story must be told. And also nobody knows about uh, this aspect of Gandhi in India. It's, it's really quite strange that you know everything about Gandhi, even in his own writing, you will hardly find any reference as if there was a blackout. This was one part of his life that nobody wanted to deal with. So I think that that was also a challenging part of doing the film. Thank you. No more questions? Okay, um, I would like to, <coughs> sorry, uh, before we stop this, I would like to say that uh, tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock, there's another possibility to go on talking about Gandhi and how his importance today and um, <coughs> how we talk about Gandhi today. So if you want to think about this film and have more questions tomorrow, you can join us for a, a panel. It will be at 4 o'clock in the Kruner Salon, which is just opposite. And <clears throat> if you like, uh, there will be a Bollywood party right now at the Hoppetshosse, the uh, ship at the Arena, the uh, ship, yeah. the party ship. <laughs> and uh, you're all welcome with your ticket, Gandhi, my father. Uh, the entrance fee will be only five euros, so join us all. Paris will be there as well, so let's have a party after this film. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming.